My shop holds a few secrets. One is that the ceiling wasn't exactly designed for tall people. The other is that this is the part I show you on camera. It's organized and pretty, but right behind me is this disaster. Tools thrown about on a Harbor Freight bench. I decided it was time to get organized, so I loaded up my rough-mounted lumber rack, went down to the local store and picked up a couple sheets of plywood. I broke the sheets down into manageable pieces in the driveway, and then hauled it inside to cut it to its final dimensions at the table saw. And because I have the short-term memory of a goldfish, I made sure to immediately stack and label them so I didn't forget where they go. We're going to fast forward through a bunch of this because there is absolutely nothing exciting about watching me drill 7,000 pocket holes. But once all the pocket holes were finished, I broke out a couple parallel clamps and started the assembly of the main body of the cabinet. Pocket holes and wood glue are strong enough to hold everything together, and they allow me to keep the assembly moving without having to wait for things to dry. If you are a joinery snob and are wondering why I'm not doing something, you know, like dovetails, I should let you know that you have wandered into the wrong YouTube channel. I have never cut a dovetail in my life. But anyways, once the back is secured to the sides, I squirted a little wood glue around the base and tipped it over onto the bottom of the cabinet. And once that was screwed into place, I flipped it over and repeated the same process for the top. Keeping with the theme of simple construction, the drawers are assembled also with pocket holes and wood glue. Then the bottom of the drawers are held in place with a few clamps and wood glue while I shoot one or 50 pin nails all the way around the perimeter. The installation of the drawer slides happened a couple different ways. Sometimes with spacers and other times with jigs. Mostly because I had just bought the jigs and I wanted to try them out. But I'm here to tell you that I think they suck. So if you grab the plans for this project, I will show you how to install all the slides using only spacers. Don't waste your money on the jig. After spacing the drawer front out an eighth inch on all sides, I used the Craig cabinet hardware jig to figure out where the poles will go. This one I actually liked and worked well. I finished up the bottom three larger drawers, and that's when I realized I screwed up. The plan was to have a continuous grain pattern across all the drawers. But I'm a moron, and I installed the bottom three drawers upside down. After pretending that mistake didn't happen, I moved on to installing the wheels. I marked the location of the holes, drilled them out, and then bolted all the wheels in place. Then, in an attempt to give myself a hernia, I lowered the cabinet to the ground to take it for a test drive. There she is. She's a beaut, Clark. Now all that's left is to hoist my heavy-ass planer up there, and I could nicely fill these five extra-large drawers up and finally be organized. Absolutely perfect. And the locking caster wheels come in handy for whenever you drop your pencil. Easy to push out of the way. There you are. If you'd like to build one of these guys for your shop, I have the plans available on my website below. So, I went to install the hardware, and I pulled the screws out of the package, and I pulled this guy out, and I said, I don't know if you can focus on that, that's too small. Not gonna, that's not going to work. So I went to the Home Depot, and I bought a giant box of the correct size screws. And then I come home to realize there's two sets of screws in the package, and they had the right set the whole time. That's awesome.